such a great pleasure to be here at the 40th anniversary of the Wine Spectator's New York Wine Experience. Uh, well, um, Sting and I were, were here back in 2017, but um, uh, we've been thrown a few curved balls since then, uh, and I'm so grateful that we're now able to gather once more after such a difficult time for everyone around the world. This is really a beautiful sight, seeing you all here and, uh, and, and, and me joining and us all being together, because for me, the pleasure of drinking wine is to drink it together. So on behalf of Sting, myself, thank you, Marvin Shankin, Bruce Anderson, and Thomas Matthews for inviting us again to talk about our estate in Tuscany. Um, Sting and I bought Il Palagio back in 1997, but we'd fallen in love with Italy many years before that and had searched a place that we could call our Italian home for a long time. Um, in the winter of 1984, Sting and I visited Italy together for the first time. Um, it was just the two of us in Venice um, trying to keep a very low profile. I was pregnant with our son Jake and that trip uh, remains one of our most special and romantic times together. Then a few years later, pregnant again, this time with our third child, Elliot, uh, we spent three months renting a villa near Pisa while Sting writing the album uh, that was to become The Soul Cages. Uh, just the year before that, uh, both of Sting's parents had died, uh, and so it was a very emotional time a uh, time of transitions, a time of mourning, and a time of joy marking the end of lives, but also the beginning of a brand new life. And you could say that between us, with writing songs and producing babies, Italy certainly gets our creative juices flowing. <laughs> um, we knew that we would love to have a home there, and although it took us another 10 years to find the right house, eventually we found Il Palagio, 20 miles south of Florence. Um, it had enough space for our growing family, plenty of land and vineyards, there you see it, and olive groves, and we felt like somehow we'd come home. And once we'd settled into the house, we turned our attention to the land. Um, back in England, we'd already created an organic farm and were pretty much self-sufficient there, but we had no experience at all of growing grapes and making wine. Uh, but uh, Sting and I are always up for a challenge. And my dad, Harry, who'd been a farmer during the Second World War, had taught me a lot about agriculture. And we dreamed together um, of having our own farm one day. But as we know, owning land can only be a temporary arrangement. The land exists uh, long before, existed long before we came along and will continue long after we've gone. Um, and so I've always thought we're custodians and stewards, and with that privilege comes responsibility to give back to the earth, not to just take. And Dad taught me about the importance of the soil he taught me that uh, we're all connected to the land, and he taught me to take care of the earth, and in return, it will take care of us. Um, I think that we can all agree that we're failing in that mission largely, and there is a lot of work to be done. There. So, with our goal in mind, we drew around us uh, a fantastic team of experts to help us to begin to make the best of the estate. And under the guidance of 
the late, great Alan York, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with, the viticulturist and enologist, we replanted vineyards that had been neglected for decades. And after five years of work and steady improvement, we had our first vintage in 2007. And our efforts were rewarded with some pretty good wine. Sister Moon remains a favorite, and we're very proud of it. But it was just the beginning of a very long learning curve. Um, in the last two years, we've reached a, a turning point in our careers as winemakers. And this pandemic gave us the opportunity to spend much more time at Il Palagio than we'd done for many years, allowing us to focus on how to expand our horizons and ambitions for our wines. And now, at our side, we're fortunate enough to have one of the most brilliant winemakers in the world, uh, Ricardo Cotarella. His experience and supreme talent uh, are already doing great things for wines, for our wines. In fact, our new flagship wine, which we've called 1530, the date which marks the beginning of the estate at Il Palagio, and we're only the third family to ever uh, live there, um, I'm proud to say has been selected as one of the top 100 Italian wines. So thank you, Wine Spectator. Thanks so much. And without further ado, it is my great pleasure to bring to the stage my 70-year-old boyfriend, husband of 38 years. <laughs> Please welcome Sting. <laughs> Every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every step you take, every single day, every word you say, I'll be watching you. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you, one spectator. Enjoy the day. Enjoy your wine. God bless you.